Well, if I'm sitting there and I'm Mr. Joe Average, I've got the book in front of me, trawling through yearlings, what looking at a page, a pedigree page, distinguishes one between another horse? Simply just to look at the page, absolutely nothing. You may as well turn them over, they've all got an equal chance on the, on the print. But it's where we come back to that an analysis of what works and what doesn't. We know that certain sire lines over certain broodmare sire lines have a higher compatibility and propensity to produce you a stakes winner. Mm. Do we know it off by, off by heart and from the top of head? No, because sire lines and the statistics will change and change and change and keep evolving. So what we have to do is we continually are updating our, our database and we sit down and when the catalogues come out, we, there might be 700, 800 horses in a catalogue. We analyse every one of those pedigrees to determine the most up-to-date, latest information on that, on that mating to see if that nick has actually worked, it has a high propensity or a lower propensity to produce a stakes winner. And what we do is we analyse and give each one a pedigree rating score, every one of those catalogue pages, and then we remove out of those catalogues anything that doesn't rate A or above. So in essence, we might only be looking up to a quarter of the catalogue, but from our point of view, we're shopping where we know we've got a higher propensity, a higher likelihood to get ourselves a great stakes class horse. Okay. So you've done your analysis, or your first part of the analysis, and you get out to the sales. What are your initial processes when you go about inspecting your horse? Good question, and it's important for people to understand what is involved. It's not just a matter of going out and socialising and saying good day to all the breeders and show, and show me your best, because that doesn't work. We have to do a lot of legwork prior to a sale, and you're normally there at least five, six days prior to the sale, really getting into it, because by then all the, all the horses are at the sale. What we do is we put all our qualified lots into a spreadsheet. And we break that down into, first of all, into barn order because they normally run alphabetically or by, or by number, but normally alphabetically. Then what we do is we then break it into the vendors that are in that barn and then we break them into the stable lot numbers. So we go to, a, we go to say, start off at barn A and we might, there might be three vendors that we want to have a look at their horses in that barn. We've got them identified and we say to the vendor, we'd like to have a look at lots number X, Y and Z and they then produce those horses for us. And we follow that process throughout the sale. You simply can't go from lot one, two, three because you're running all over the sale yard. What you have to do is break down the analysis of where each lot is and draw it out of the box. From there, that's when we start to critique the horse and that's where that's the next, next stage on it. But basically, when we get to the sale yard, we know what horses we want to identify and we know the plan or the map of where we need to go to find those horses. Um, the idea, uh, if you look through the website, the idea of risk reduction is, is mentioned quite regularly. Uh, I'm, I'm sort of uh, at... Uh, crossroads to understand exactly what this means. Could you explain just a little bit more about that? Certainly. A good bloodstock agent's role, and that's what we consider ourselves to be as a syndicator of a good a high quality bloodstock agency, is to reduce the risks and increase the opportunities for our clients of racetrack success. How do we do that? What's that mean? Well, simply, we start off with what I've already just been mentioning, which is the pedigree. We analyse and we know that only we wish to buy from A grade. Mm -hmm. The second thing is then we look at the animal itself and we critique the animal. The first thing we're looking at, as soon as that horse rolls out of its box, is the athleticism of the animal. Then we follow that with the conformational structure. Basically, the foundation of, just like you would if you were going to buy a house, you're looking at the, the skeletal structure of a horse. Other things that we look for when we're critiquing that individual for the first time round, uh, things like its size, its strength, its, uh, the scope for athleticism and movement. We're looking at the biomechanical aspects of the animal. What I refer to there is how it walks, whether it's got much of an overstep, a big overstep, a short overstep, whether it tracks truly, does it go through on the same lines, or do the hind feet come out and splay at angles? All these types of issues will create an increased opportunity of either racetrack success or increase the opportunity of race, racetrack breakdown and injury to your animal. So we, we go through and we remove all the risky pedigrees, we remove 
aspects of confirmation that we know have a higher propensity to create the horse to break down. We know we then critique the animal as an athlete. Simply, we go back to football days and we look at, uh, say, rugby union or rugby league, and uh, we say, well, if we want to buy a, a, a winger to get the ball on the outside flanks and run down and score with the speed men, he's not going to look the same as a front rower. A front rower's there to do all the grinding and yeah. the hard yards, and the winger's out there on the thing. Well, the same principle, if you want to... If you want to buy a speed horse, you don't go and buy one that looks like an Angus bull, a big, strong, heavy cart horse. You've got to buy an athlete, and that's what uh, we critique. Okay. So those are some of the steps that I suppose you go out and you look for once uh, the animal's there.